Smoke was a white-coloured cat, with scattered patches the same colour as his father's coat. Black. He had complete heterochromia, causing his eyes to be two different colours, blue and green. The blue eyes he knew he got from his father, which helped Smoke paint a vague picture of his mother, of whom he had never known since she had been a random egg donor. Given his father was infertile, he had been grown in an artificial womb, using a shakily reconstructed strand of his DNA. The methods used to bring him into being had always brought about genetic disorders. Smoke was just lucky to not have a serious one, given his father had been very careful to personally watch over his development, fixing any potential problem as soon as he saw it. Smoke had made sure he wasn't followed. Silver was difficult to leave without being noticed, especially given the fact that there were eyes practically everywhere. He was also next in line to take over the facilities, which was why there was so much surveillance around him. Despite being from Silver, the cat had no technical enhancements as his father had forbidden him from having any. No lenses on his eyes, constantly overanalyzing everything. No ear implants that others could call on him and track in his location. And no internal machinery that would need tune-ups. Smoke was happy to have those degrees of freedom. Walking along with the usual stream, he found a log and crossed to the other side. Smoke was glad to have this little spot, up the hill and onto the cliff. It allowed him to see out over the clan lands. He could see as far as he wanted in any direction without having to be reminded of Silver. Laying down to wait, Smoke watched the birds fly out of the forest's canopy and dived back into the trees at the sight of a falcon that lived in the clanlands. The huge Mount Erethane, where order and disarray had fought to the death, pierced through the cloud barrier and continued climbing a good distance. Their death had brought about the Aetherials, and the gods in turn brought about all the life forms that inhabited the world. The Aetherials home of Itadrawn sat hovering high above the peak. On a clear day, it was said you could see a glint of the spiritual barrier that surrounded the silver city, Futa, itself. No cat or wolf could climb to the top of the mountain. At that height, the air was too thin to breathe, and they would asphyxiate. The sound of the breeze whispered through the trees, mixing with birds hoppering around in the green branches and fluttering in between the trunks. A swell of cicada calls rose in the air before dying down again. Thirty seconds later the noises swelled up again before fading away to a tranquil forest silence. Nearby the stream trickled away over rocks and under and through the tree roots. Summer filled the air with humidity which hung over the abosia like a blanket. With Opia slithering her way into the world and bringing autumn with her, the air smelled vaguely of dirt as animals foraged for food on the forest floor. Smoke allowed the serenity to envelop him. If he were to have drifted off to sleep, he wouldn't have been able to tell. Over the noise of the forest, he heard something coming through the undergrowth. He opened his eyes and lifted his head, perking up his ears and looking in the direction the noise had come from. His pupils dilated as he strained to focus on who, or whatever, it was. If it was someone from Silver coming to collect him, he didn't know how long it would be before he would get a chance to go out again. But if it were a larger animal, say, a wolverine from the Diamond Mountains, he would have a bigger problem on his hands. Smoke! Yarrow exclaimed with an overwhelming joy to see him again. The white cat breathed out a sigh of relief, and his heart fluttered. Shh. The text could be nearby. Someone had to have seen me leave. They don't trust me to be out on my own anymore. Yarrow approached more cautiously at his warning. He walked up to Smoke and they nuzzled against each other. The first time they had met was two years ago. They had bumped into one another by accident. Yarrow had gone too far north on a solo hunting trip and Smoke had been out again, trying to get some time away from his father in the facility. Yarrow was able to hold a conversation with Smoke, even if it was from a distance. The small talk was on simple things, mostly Smoke asking questions about the clan lands that had lasted all day long. 
Smirk actually forgot to return within a reasonable time, which was when his father realised he was skipping out on his duties. After their encounter, Smirk ended up going to the same place every time he got out. Sometimes Yarrow would be there, and sometimes he wouldn't show. But when he did, they both seemed to be a little happier. Over this course of around two years, they grew more comfortable being around each other, and eventually a bond formed between them, and that grew into something stronger. They tried to make plans to see each other, though Smoke was able to get out less and less. At this point, they were on a schedule of trying to see each other on the first day of every week, Yarrow mostly coming to an empty cliffside, rejoicing whenever he did see Smoke. What makes you think someone saw you? My father's away for a few days, sorting out a supply bunker and hunting along the way. But knowing him, he's probably just hunting. He left me in charge, but Icarus doesn't trust me. Icarus doesn't seem to trust anyone. That has got to be the understatement of the era. How long since you left? Excuse me? How long ago did you make it out? About an hour ago, why? I'm trying to figure if I should hunt now or later. I told, my, I told my clan I was going hunting and I should bring something back. Couldn't you say you didn't catch anything? I could, but after I used that same excuse three times in a row, cats like my brother started to catch on. On the horizon, the sun set in its brilliant colors of golden hues along the orange, purple, red, and yellow clouds. Smoke felt Yarrow lean into him. Any idea when your father will be back? I have no idea. And I really don't care. I'm sick of that place. Then why don't you just leave? What do you mean? You know, leave and come stay in the forest. I'm sure you'd love it. I can't just leave. If I do, I'm sure my father will send a text to ravage and search this place until I return. Yarrow sat with this before sighing. You really would love it here. The small feline responded, rubbing his head into Smoke's shoulders. I'm sure you would. Suppose I might. Smoke! Came an all too familiar voice that was filled to the brim with seemingly forced malevolence. What are you doing traversing with a commoner? Smoke shot up and spun around to face a wolf. The dark grey of his fur made him look almost black in the twilight. Vicarus! Yarrow timidly jumped behind Smoke, who stood defensively in front of him. Icarus's eyes were a dark green, piercing and filled with an arrogant disgust. They gave off a faint glow, given the surgically installed robotic lenses, making the dark grey wolf look like a green-eyed demon. It would be wrong to say that Icarus was considered the pinnacle of Silver's technological achievement. The truth is, there was no competition. Not a single tissue of organic matter was left to him whatsoever, except for a select repository, cardiovascular and digestive tissues to keep his brain alive, which was the only untouched and unmodified organ that remained of the original Icarus. His skin had been removed, with a very thin sheet of polymer taking its place, and thin fibres standing in as fur. In the place of his teeth and claws were sharp pieces of metal from the robotics that replaced his skeletal system. Circuitry coursed through his body in place of his circulatory system, and his muscles, sinews and tendons had been replaced by flexible rubbers as he no longer needed them. His nervous system, not including the brain or brainstem, had been replaced by neurotransmitting wires which sent signals from his brain to his robotic endoskeleton to move. His lungs had been reduced by 85% and oxidized the little amount of blood left, which traveled through his heart and a few remaining veins and arteries that traveled to and from his brain. A thin, custom-fit membrane woven with a network of electrodes that sensed his body movement regulated the blood flow. His heart could, theoretically, beat forever. Even when exerting himself, his pulse never went above 132 beats per minute. His digestive system had been reduced greatly in size and resembled a simple tube. At this point, it was only fueling the brain and providing water for his blood to stay liquid, so it had been trimmed to a more reasonable size. 
and if that wasn't enough, his tail alone was a spectacular achievement of silver. The prehensile, robotic tentacle of metal looked like a snake with its individual segments that allowed it to move freely like a worm. On the end was a massive, three-pronged claw. The three prongs could close flat together when resting, as it was now. A smaller, more precise claw could be used if the tips came together while the claw remained open. The tail was so complex it had to have an AI system installed within its wiring in order for the user to be able to move it properly. A red shining camera in the centre of the claw acted as an eye for the computer to see. It could move on its own and had a unique personality. The tail had been programmed to be subservient to Icarus. No similar tails had been successfully constructed, and as a result, no other tech in the facility had one. It's nothing. Smoke snapped, standing his ground. Mind your business. Icarus gave a harsh look of annoyance that bored into Smoke's soul. Come. You're needed back at Silver. There was no point in arguing or fighting with Icarus. Smoke gave in and went to follow. Meet again next week? Yeah. Listen, you've escaped so many times that if it were up to me, you Come would on, be... Smoke. Let's go back home. Scythe was a light grey, almost white wolf with brown eyes and Icarus's mate. She wasn't as enhanced as Icarus, but still had some circuitry. Mainly the lenses and a robotic tail which was the same colour as her fur. She was calmer than her significant other and cared for him greatly. It was odd that she and Icarus were close, given that Icarus seemed to prefer machinery over the organic. Smoke thought it was the whole opposites attract thing. They argued a lot, usually ending with Icarus having a fit. She stayed with him as well. She couldn't find it in her heart to leave him in the state he was. Smoke began following Scythe back to Silver, back to those confined spaces and artificial everything. Icarus stared at Yarrow with a burning hatred in his green eyes. The size of the wolf's jaws could bite him half, and Yarrow felt unsafe without Smoke. Uh, hi? If I find you here again... Right. Icarus growled through his mechanical voice box, giving it an unnatural sound. Bye! Yarrow exclaimed before shooting off into the woods, away from the tech mutant. Icarus's tail whirred to life. A claw opened up and curved around the little of the eye. Its red lens stared into his green eyes and the three prongs spun like a wheel. Do you require assistance, sir? The tail asked him through their combined consciousness. Icarus gave it a look and the tail lent its control over to him. The massive claw snapped around and pulled the squirrel from its place behind a tree. He brought it up to his face and stared at it for a few seconds, before crushing it into a shapeless mass. He screamed as he threw the corpse over the edge of the cliff. That helped him manage what had been rising in his soul for the last few hours. But it wasn't enough, so he jammed the tail into the wood of a nearby tree, twisted it in half the entire trunk. Scythe and Smoke were making their way to the caves that housed the facility of Silver. The silence which before had been pleasant to Smoke was now awkward and uncomfortable. The fact that he had feelings for a cat outside of Silver, and that cat was from the Clanlands, and that cat happened to be a male, was frowned upon by most of the techs in Silver. His father didn't care who he was seeing, but he didn't say or do anything about it, and that was something that really ticked him off. The fact that his father seemed to ignore him. The only one who was truly supportive was Scythe, who was like the mother he never had. Smoke, you know Icarus. Scythe started, trying to make him feel better. He doesn't get along with a lot of animals. He especially hates those who tell him what to do. I realize that. But it doesn't mean he can act all high and mighty. Especially with me. Indeed, he can be a little bit... Scythe trailed off, looking for the right word. She found it, but couldn't bring herself to say it. But what else do you expect? His personality has been on the decline recently. 
It's just a way he makes himself feel better. They continued for a few moments in the silence. The sounds of day decayed into night, and the birds were replaced by crickets. My father knows I've been meeting with Yero, doesn't he? Yes. He's actually been letting you leave for a while now. But he is right when he says that you need to start focusing on leading Silver. Well, what if I don't want to? Smoke, don't let anyone hear you say that. Why not? He asked, walking ahead before spinning around to face her, which stopped them in their tracks. His two different coloured eyes stared into her brown ones with an all-too-familiar pain, tears welling up in his eyes. I don't want to do this anymore. Taking in the stray and glamless animals to do these experiments on them against their will. I'm sick of it. I just... He choked, a few tears escaping their ducts. Scythe sighed. She understood his pain. She didn't like what they were doing either. But she wanted to help Icarus out of the hole he'd been digging deeper and deeper. That was the only reason she stuck around that place and she couldn't deny that Smoke would also be lost without her. She loved them both in different ways, and wanted to help them as best she could. Smoke was easier to aid as he actually wanted her assistance. Icarus, on the other hand, had put up a wall of steel. I know, Smoke. I know. And so am I. We'll find a way out for you, okay? But for now, just... pretend you don't mind it. I'll do all I can if you can do that. Deal? Smoke eased up and turned, continuing their walk towards Silver. Deal. What deal? Icarus asked, having caught up. Nothing. Scythe said, giving him an uneasy smile. Just how much of that had he heard? Icarus raised a telling eyebrow. Come on. We should double the pace if we want to get back in time. Agreed. Icarus said, turning his eyes to Smoke. The two stared at each other before Smoke broke contact and continued to Silver. Icarus gave a nod of slight approval, following after. Scythe followed next to Icarus. I don't think his father would approve of you assisting him in his escapes. Icarus, please. Scythe said, keeping her gaze low. He's still young. He shouldn't be kept locked up inside his whole life. He needs to get out from time to time. When he's in charge, he can have all the time he wants. But right now, he's not. He's not being allowed to grow up normally. He should be allowed to have fun. Make mistakes, make friends, fall in love. Normal things for someone his age. Don't you remember times like that? That was a long time ago. Before I lost my family to the plagues. Not all of your family. Scythe said, moving in closer to Icarus so they were walking together. She carefully rubbed the side of her head on his shoulder, knowing he would only feel a dull pressure on his robotic frame. He didn't pull away, but she could tell he resented the contact. No more escapes. Icarus warned aloud to both Scythe and Smoke. No promises. Smoke muttered. Scythe silently thought the same. Yeah, I don't believe in destiny. I just do what's best for me. Don't listen to my enemies. They're just full of jealousy. Yeah, this legacy. You gon' see what's left of me. You gon' see success in me. You ain't seen the rest of me. I just wanna be the best at what I know. Better than the rest, just watch me grow. Put me to the test and watch me go. This is my quest, I'ma make it known. They call me obsessive, oh I know. Call me selective with my notes. Call me aggressive with my flow. Call me offensive, even though. Joe, I ain't gonna lie, life's tough. Try to get by, life's rough. Try to do it right, it's not enough. Even though you try, you still mess up. But I'm still gonna fight for what I love. Still gonna die for what I love. Still gonna try, I won't give up. Still gonna fight until I've won. They say I'm way too obsessed and I've got nothing left. And I'm not quite there yet But those words they'll regret Cause I've got something left And I'm not giving in I will not let them win I won't stop till the end No